Now I want to discuss some types, some examples of corneal ulcers. In general, any inflammation can be due to toxic agents or allergic reaction. Toxic agent can be infective or non-infective. So infective keratitis can be due, can be due to bacteria, viral, fungal, or protozoa. Examples of non-infective are exposure keratitis, neuroparalytic keratitis, keratomalacia, traumatic keratitis. Allergic can be like in marginal ulcers, flectinular and sprinkator, rheumatoid, polyarthritis nodosa. So this is the first example of infective ulcers which is hypopion ulcer. We have a typical hypopion ulcer due to pneumococcal infection it represent 80% of cases of hypopion ulcer and also we have other bacteria or fungi making ulcer with hypopion this type does not have the specificities we see here in the typical hypopion ulcer in the typical hypopion ulcer the ulcer has an advancing edge and a healing edge so all over the time the ulcer is moving, is scraping on the surface, advancing in one way, healing on the opposite side. At the base of the ulcer here, in the deep layers, we get infiltration of the deep layers of the cornea. This is known as posterior abscess. And also we have the hypopion. Hypopion means pus in the anterior chamber. Here you can see an area of ulceration, small hypopion another example ulcer and hypopion perforation is common in this type of ulcer because of the affection of the deep layers the clinical picture complications and treatment are similar to the general lines we discussed earlier another example is herpes herpes simplex virus can produce dendritic ulcer or can produce disiform keratitis herpes means a lesion started on the skin started with an area of redness later vesicles will form these vesicles will become secondary infected forming pustules then the pustules will rupture leaving crust so skin lesion in this order redness vesicle pustule crust is called herpes in this example you can see the area here is red and there is pustules here and maybe some crusts here in a dendritic ulcer it's caused by herpes simplex virus it gets it has a very characteristic branching changes here the virus causes epitheliotrophic changes it follow the nerves the virus lies in the trigeminal ganglion so recurrences are quite common with stress or fever or menses and also it's known to leave the cornea hypothetic the clinical picture is the same as the general lines but on examination we see this very characteristic branching appearance with terminal knobs if the patient's resistance is weak or if the patient is receiving topically steroids there is a great risk that the ulcer will change into a geographic ulcer a wide area of ulceration with branching at the ends with terminal knobs the second form herpes can cause to the eye is an ancient antibody reaction what we call a disiform keratitis it's an example of affection of the endothelium due to ancient antibody reaction. As we see here, we can see an area of haziness. And on a slit lamp, the cornea is edematous. Actually, the virus, the herpes simplex, or sometimes the herpes zoster, is here in the epithelium, sending toxins to the change the antigenicity of the endothelium so ancient antibody reaction will occur and the endothelial function will be lost then there will be a localized edema 
as this is a case of ancient antibody reaction then the treatment should be steroids we have to give steroids to cure this condition to avoid exacerbation of the virus and the epithelium we co combine the steroids with topical antiviral treatment another example of disc shaped opacity due to increased thickness of the cornea this is an ancient antibody reaction of the endothelium cornea then we know that most probably the cornea is affected also this type of organism is known to affect the iris and ciliary body causing aridocyclitis this is the reminder of the anatomy the nerves as as you see here the nasociliary nerve supplies the inside of the eye and at the same time supplies the tip of the nose also other nerves can be affected in herpes zoster including second cranial nerve optic neuritis motor supply to the muscles of the eye and the facial nerve the treatment is herpes is uh, acyclovir skin ointment for the skin and acyclovir eye ointment for the cornea if there is iritis then we have to give steroids next is fungal infection fungals are opportunistic organisms they rarely can affect healthy cornea so we need some sort of trauma like plant injury or contact lens wearers not taking a good care of their contact lenses or prolonged use of topical or systemic steroids fungal ulcer has characteristics the edge of the ulcer and the infiltration is feathery there is some infiltration away of the main site these are known as satellites and if there is hypopion the hypopion has a rising level so these are the characteristics of fungal keratitis the pain usually is not severe it's less than in bacteria so notice here the infiltration the edge is feathery again here and we get some satellites away from the main site again feathery with satellites and this hypopion is rising here it's not straight for diagnosis we need to have some material and we need to stain it and culture it same line of treatment but we give a specific antifungal therapy like diflocane fungizone and if we can also give antibiotics but not heavily because a huge amount of antibiotics will fulminate fungal infection we just give antibiotics enough to avoid secondary bacterial infection Acanthamoeba, it's a protozoa present in the soil, water, fresh water, or salty. It can be in active or cystic forms. Contact lens is a major predisposing factor. The characteristic of acanthamoeba affection that the pain is very severe, far beyond the clinical signs we see. If a patient comes with corneal ulcer or corneal infiltration and does not respond to the regular treatment, we start to think of the possibility of antimicrobial and again diagnosis will depend on isolating the organism by biopsy or scrap. We can give, take some part of the tissue and stain it to check for the cysts or the organism non cyst this is an example of infiltration of the cornea and there is the area of the ulcer with heavy infiltration of the base of the ulcer this can be due to bacteria fungal viral or protozoa so to reach the proper diagnosis we have to go for cultural sense and sensitivity and smear so I give you in this part of presentation the different examples of infectious corneal ulcers. Thank you.